Hey everybody, Nick here, and today I got a review for you of this little guy right here. This is the Clark Custom Knives Huntsman Warney. Um, first off, though, I want to thank very much Hellacious Blades for sending this guy along. It's their, uh, it's their logo there. Um, they are longtime supporters of the channel. Dean and his family are uh, uh, just great humans, generally speaking, and um, they, they carry uh, Clark Custom Knives. They said, hey, Nick, I, you know, I, I think this is a maker you'd be really interested in. He's doing amazing work, and, you know, Dean's got a good eye, so I'm always happy to check things out. I told him, as always, though, I'm going to talk about the good, the great, the bad, the ugly. Might be a gem, might be junk. They did still send it along. Nonetheless, we have to assume that this is, well, it's a custom knife, so it's kind of inherently the best quality controlled thing ever, I would hope. Um, and nonetheless, I'm trying not to let that affect the nature and quality of my review, but there you go. Next thing, size comparison. This is actually a relatively small knife right here. We'll go on ahead and put this guy next to the Sonterio. The Sonterio, that's a lot like Ontario, but with me thinking I'm going to say Spyderco. The Sonterio rat number two right here. And so what we see here is size-wise, this is actually a little shorter than the Ontario two, um, and that, that's good to know. Um, here it is against the Spyderco Delica, uh, or, or perhaps the on Cydico. Um, anyways, I digress. This is the Delica. We can see relatively small knife. And then here it is against the um, Spydeco Paramilitary 2. And then here it is against the other knife in my uh, collection that is a handmade affair. This is the uh, Pena Knives uh, Front Flipper Trap. Uh, to actually, to be clear, this guy isn't in my collection, but it is a fully handmade knife. So anyways, um, and next thing, uh, what is Jason Clark Custom Knives? That's JC. That actually stands for Jason Clark, not what it usually does on either side of a cross, right? But anyways, this is a maker who uh, not so far from Gainesville, Florida, right? Um, and he is a, a custom maker, and he, he hand makes every knife that he does, and I think that's that's a beautiful thing. Um, and I am reviewing just this one knife, but the thing is, he is a custom knife maker, so each one is a little bit different. Um, and I've been told, at least by Dean, that this is representative of his whole line. And in fact, he just said, "Hey, Nick, wh which one is most appealing to you? Go on ahead and choose one. They're all going to be about the same in quality." So, uh, you know, I, I picked this one guy off the, just by pictures on a website. But still, at the same time, um, you have to assume this is a custom maker, so different works are going to vary a little bit. And an issue you might find in one of these might not be present in the next one, hopefully. So anyways, there you go. Let's go on ahead and jump into the good, the great, the bad, and the ugly of this very interesting knife right here. So on the good side, to start with, um, this guy is made in the USA. Like I said, um, uh, Jason Clark is not so far outside of Gainesville. He's down there in Florida. Um, they, you know, of course, quality is about effort, not geography, but it's always nice to support somebody from your uh, home country, and so that's a beautiful thing. Next thing, um, one thing that I noticed actually looking at the maker's website is he has a little banner at the top, we do custom, like I do custom knives, like literally custom, like hey, what do you want? Okay, I'll make it, thanks. Um, This is getting more and more unusual these days in the world, right? They, they, these days custom means, you know, what color do you want it anodized, uh, rather than, you know, yeah, I'll make it to whatever spec you're interested in, that's a beautiful thing, and it's nice to see and support makers who still do that. Next thing, if you look at his actual website, and you look at even the select that Hellacious has got around. He's got a bunch of different styles, right? This is one of them, but there are a bunch of others with different materials, different things like that. There's actually a fair amount of breadth and versatility in the collection, and that's, I gotta say, that is impressive. Um, I appreciate that very much. Next thing, the action on this is very nice. With a uh, nice, smooth, reliable flipping action, no wrist at all required. In fact, it's even a little smoother after I uh, after I did my disassembly with it. Um, and so I gotta say, it's, it's just, it is a really nice little action. And it is super smooth on the close, like, oh, yeah. Um, you know, very, very, very nice little action. Exactly the kind of thing you'd want to see out of a custom knife. So that's good. Next thing, this guy has very nice ergonomics. Um, it has a very small finger choil, so do keep that in mind. But for relatively small hands, you can fit a finger up here and choke up a little bit, or you can choke back a bit and actually do just fine with it. But this is a knife that is actually quite nice in the hand. I appreciated it very much. And, you know, when I carried it, it was like, yeah, it's it's nice. Uh, the ergos there are absolutely solid. Next thing, this has a very low-profile flipper tab. I mean, it is definitely there, and it might maybe be able to peck on something in your pocket, but by and large, this is very, very low-profile, and the action is well-tuned such that you don't need anything more. And I think that's that's very nice. It's nice to see a maker really doing that right. Next thing, blade on this guy. Blade here is CPM 154, which is one of those steels that is absolutely not like, oh my God, you know, the, the, the top of the rock. But at the same time, it's a really good steel. I'd even argue that CPM 154 is underrated, right? The powder metallurgy version. It's different from 154 CM, by the way. Uh, chemically, it's similar, but it's made differently. Um, this is a very, very good steel. And so I like seeing that very much. And I think in custom knives is a place 
place where it really shines well, especially when it's heat treated well, which again, Glock is doing the heat treat in shops, so one has to assume it is. Um, so that's nice. Next thing, this has a very nice swedge to it on the blade. Um, what we see here is that not only do we have the conventional uh, Warncliffe grind right here, but we also have this swedge on the top here, which is cool. It actually has a little bit of a bow to it, which I think is actually intentional. What I mean by that is it's in a little bit more here, and I think it ends up looking really cool. I like the grind on this knife a lot, and you don't very often see this kind of a strong swedge with this kind of grit, as well as the symmetry of it is, is actually quite impressive. I'm, I'm very, very happy with the blade on this guy. And warty blades, generally, one cliff style knives uh, are great. They give a lot of really good utility cutting for like drag cuts along the surface, things like that. But this also has a little bit of tip there. Um, and it's got a nice thin edge to it too. I mean, this is a nice grind, generally speaking. So I, I gotta say, I like the blade on this guy a lot. Then finally, on the good side, this guy has really nice fit and finish overall. I mean, even after a disassembly, which by the way, the, the, the maker agreed to completely, as did Hellacious. And oftentimes that can be a little bit dangerous with handmade knives because it's like they have to go back together. In the, you know, some people make up for poor tolerances with, um, you know, a skillful disassembly. Well, God knows my disassemblies ain't going to be so skillful. So, uh, you know, th th this is definitely uh, the fact that it went back together with looking great, uh, with really great fit and finish is good. And in fact, we see lots of really nice details on it too. I mean, not only are things just perfectly flush as we're going throughout all this kind of thing. You know, the flushness here, the micata, et cetera. Um, the but we see nice grinds. We see just a lot of really nice details that make this guy, well, pretty impressive, pretty exceptional. Um, so I have to say, fit and finish wise, this is definitely in the upper echelons of the of the custom knife game. Certainly, I mean, uh, it's, there are high upper echelons, but this is an impressive piece, fit and finish wise, for a completely handmade knife. Um, and so, uh, to me at least, all of that is the good, is that it's got great fit and finish overall. It's got a nice blade, a low profile flip a tab, good ergos, nice action, a strong variety, it, it takes, uh, I'm sorry, the guy takes custom work and it is made here in the States. To me though, the great thing about this knife and the thing that makes this exceptional, because like if this were just a general production knife or something like that, it'd be like, yeah, this is a pretty cool knife. It's fine. It's solid. No, no, no issue. Thing is though, this is different than a lot of the things I have on my channel in that it is completely handmade. I asked the maker, like, really? Like, that's impressive. And he said, well, you know, I've got a water jet in the shop, which, okay, yeah, that's fine. I, I, I'm not objecting to that, right? Just save some bandsaw time. But everything is designed, cut, shaped, ground, heat treated, fitted, and finished in his shop, at least according to the maker's website, right? And in a world of CNC mathematical perfection, there is a lot to be said for a person uh, doing everything by hand. Just from an artistic perspective, it is very, very interesting and very impressive um, to see, you know, really well done handmade work. And I would put this as very, very well done handmade work. This is an artist creating something really exceptional by hand, and I have to appreciate that very, very much. Um, and so this is a knife that, unlike a lot of the stuff on my channel, is completely handmade, and I think that is something that is worth respecting, and to an extent, something worth paying for. So anyways, um, to me at least, that's what's great here, is that this knife is completely handmade, um, and that, that that's pretty exceptional in the modern life uh, landscape. Okay, on the bad side, to start off with, uh, one thing, you know, I posted this guy on Instagram, and the logo here actually got a fair amount of commentary, and of course, it's his party, it's his rules, he's more than welcome to do whatever he would like in the logo. Thing is, this was not to a lot of folks' taste. You know, for me, the, the, these kinds of religious themes on knives always has a feeling of, like, profaning the sacred a little bit, um, but a bunch of people said things like, well, why would I carry a symbol as somebody else's faith on my knife? Um, that's, uh, that's a really good question. Ultimately, it is an aesthetic decision, um, but for me, I, I tend to prefer for a separation of church and cutlery, and uh, I, I and I think it's going to be a deal breaker for some, but it might actually be a perk for others. It's probably a wash, but it is definitely something you're going to want to keep in mind. That this logo is going to be well, maybe a little bit contentious because not everybody shares uh, the, the, the maker's faith. So um, you know, whatever, do with it what you will. Um, maybe a pro, maybe a con. I don't care. Uh, at the end of the day, uh, let's move on to something a little bit more important, which is the price. This is actually a pretty pricey knife. This is a seven hundred and fifty dollar knife. Now, okay. Okay, I know what you're thinking, like, whoa, Nick, that's expensive. And that is, absolutely. But the thing is, it's also a very handmade knife, right? Um, this is a knife that you are buying not as much necessarily the materials, you're not buying as much the knife, you're buying the time that an artist spent to do all of this stuff by hand in their shop, right? You are supporting the artist. You are supporting the ability of Jason Clark to be able to do what he loves and all of that. And you know what? Absolutely. You could get several great production knives for the price of this guy. And those production knives would have similar 
levels of fit and finish. But there is something different about knowing that one human made this knife start to finish, and that is actually something cool, and I think it's something worth supporting. So 750 bucks is not cheap, and that's going to take this off the table for a bunch of people. But at the same time, I don't think you should look at it as, oh my god, he's ripping us off. I think you should look at it as, oh, that's a very different thing that he's doing, basically, relative to a lot of the machine-made stuff we're doing regularly. Next thing. Disassembly of this was an odyssey, if you will. Um, and th th there were a couple of specific reasons. A, it's using the IKBS loose bearing system in the middle there, which always make things complicated. But also, the screws on these are tiny, tiny, tiny little hex bits. And then even beneath these, there were tinier screws back here where they could have been huge. Uh, the, the, the screws really were not great in this. They're, 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 I really like seeing makers using standard sizes. And like T6 is small enough, thank you very much. Going even smaller than that with little tiny hex bits is always a little bit scary. And that's not something I generally like to see. On these external fit and finish screws, I almost get it right. It's making the screws disappear a little bit more. Okay, but on the internal one, that was a little bit problematic. And generally speaking, it was just not a great knife for disassembly. It worked. I could get it back together. It's not like a deal breaker, but oh boy, uh, that, that's a sit down, grab some tea, because you're going to be here for a while kind of disassembly. Next thing, um, this guy, I could have, I would have liked to see just a little bit more in the way of finger choil here. Um, not only because it would make it a little bit bigger, but also you see there is the little tiniest hint of a smile at the edge of the grind here, because uh, the choil didn't go out quite, quite quite far enough, right? Another millimeter or two and you would have been absolutely golden. And again, it would give another millimeter for a bigger finger to slide in there as a finger choil, but not the end of the world. It is definitely a thing. Next thing, the IKBS logo on the side of it here. I don't know that I love that, right? IKBS is a fine system, right? And this is certainly using it. And I guess that's a good warning of like abandon all hope ye who enter here, right? Um, but at the same time, in a knife that is profoundly handmade, I feel like that almost cheapens it a little bit. I kind of, uh, the logo here is by the well, exceptionally well like engraved and lays it on there. I assume that's a laser, could be an etch. But either way, it's it's well put on there, whatever it is. But this just doesn't feel like it belongs there. Um, I don't know that that needs to be a thing. And, uh, you know, people who look at this and buy it are gonna like they're gonna know what's inside it right next thing tip on this guy is a little tiny bit close in the back here um this guy you can see is right there lurking is it the end of any worlds no not particularly but i can see if you really press down against this that tip could graze your finger just a little bit Again, not terrible, but it's a thing. Next thing, um, and actually getting into um, bigger issues. The clip on this guy is uh, very weak. What I mean by that is uh, the, out of the box here, there is actually a gap. The clip is hovering up above the scale. And as a result, the tension in the pocket wasn't very strong. Now, I certainly could have removed this guy. If I owned the knife, what I'd probably do is take this guy off the back here and then just rebend the clip downwards a little bit, bow it out a bit, and then that should make this press up a little bit more in there. But this is a little detail, but it's one I'd kind of like to see addressed, right? Um, having that not, uh, it just ended up feeling a little bit too loose. And so I found myself continuing to carry that or, I'm sorry, check that as I'm carrying it or to put it inside the, um, the little slip that it came with. And by the way, it does come with a little slip. So there is that. Nice slip, by the way. And then finally, um, on the bad side, and the only thing on here that I think is just kind of a, an oversight directly I'm going to zoom in here a little bit. And I'm absolutely nitpicking, but at 750 bucks, I'm allowed to. Yeah, you see the issue right here. This little clip here is perfectly flush. Well, more or less perfectly flush. Pretty damn flush on this side um, within good tolerance. But on this side, unfortunately, the clip has a little bit of a gap there. Um, yeah, you can see it right there. Um, and so what I would have liked to have seen is just a little bit of rounding out on the bottom of the clip there, just to make it fit the contour of these scales just a little bit better. I feel like that would have made things a little bit cleaner, and that is really the only fit and finish oversight of any substance that I noticed on this entire knife. Like, the only issue is this little gap underneath the clip. And so either flattening the scales or rounding the bottom of the clip there um, could have made this not an issue, but this is a little tiny issue. But at 750 bucks, little tiny issues become a little bit bigger. So um, to me, at least, that is the bad, is that the clip has the, uh, the, the, the that little gap there. The clip actually could be made a little bit tighter out of the factory. The tip is a little close in the back. I don't love the IKBS logo on here. Not the end of the world. Um, it is 750 bucks, which represents paying money for time more than you are for anything. And then um, this is definitely not down with the separation of church and cutlery, but at the same time, that's going to be individual. Some folks love it. Some folks hate it. Whatever. It's going to be a thing. Um, final thing. Uh, on the ugly front, in a CNC made 
handmade knife, I would probably drag people pretty hard for this, but given that everything here is handmade, this little bit, I'm not going to go too deep into it, so I don't think there's anything particularly ugly here. On the final conclusion front, this is actually a very impressive little piece for a handmade knife, right? This is an American maker who is open to custom work, which is a beautiful thing to start with, right? But it has a good variety uh, of different options from the maker. It's got a nice action, solid ergonomics, a nice blade, great fit and finish, and all in a knife that is actually completely made by hand with some very nice little details here. It is not quite perfection. It's got a logo that's going to be a little polarizing, a price that's more in the handmade art category than the uh, daily tool category, tiny hardware, a few details, a tappy clip, and one little tiny gap that I think could be addressed. But this is actually a really nice example of and reminder of a type of knife that I just don't spend as much time on in the channel here which is true handmade customs, the kinds of things that are being made by people with grinders, that are being made by people with uh, manual tools, by actual manual machining techniques, rather than using uh, CNC sorts of finishes. Usually my kind of approach is more CNC made stuff, and you know, certainly I've featured a few before, right? But usually the kinds of things I'm after are more along these lines. This is like the, uh, the Herman Knives Ishtar right here, but we can see all of this is computer numerical control kind of stuff, and in these cases, like mathematical perfection is the thing. Right? Um, and th th there is, though, a very definitive joy in this, right? When you have something like this, um, you end up feeling the, the maker a little bit more. You see the evidence of the maker's work, right? As opposed to with a CNC, where, I, by the way, I don't want to diminish the work that CNC machinists are doing, but at the same time, you're not seeing exactly the individual strokes, the individual grinding, that kind of thing, of the maker themselves quite as often, right? Um, that is definitely something that is a little bit different. And so, in this case, you know, the imperfections, and by the way, they're really aren't many of them at all, make the knife a little bit more unique. They add a little bit of character, right? Um, and especially when those imperfections don't actually matter in the grand scheme of things, that does make each one a little bit different. Um, and each piece then becomes necessarily unique, and custom ends up meaning hand-fitted and handmade rather than anodized differently with your choice of scale or inlay, right? And most importantly, I think what this knife shows you, and what a, a really good handmade knife will, generally speaking, is show you that handmade is not a demerit, right? Unfortunately, knife shows are just full of makers who are making handmade knives that are, in many cases, beautiful and absolutely require intense skill. I don't want to diminish that, but which ultimately end up feeling underwhelming in fit and finish next to a lot of your basic or even mid-range production style knives, right? And the thing is, if these makers are going to charge high-end prices, they need to be keeping pace with high-end production. They need to be making knives that you handle it and you're like, this is good, and this is, in fact, just as good as some of the really good stuff from a lot of them the CNC makers, etc. And I think this is a knife that does that. Um, with just the exception of that little clip issue, this knife absolutely is keeping pace with the high end of production and is really very impressive. It doesn't sound like much that this is as good as a higher end production knife, but it's actually a lot, considering that this is one person in a shop doing this on their own manually. I have a lot of respect for a maker who can really pull this off well. And so, again, this was just a loan. I can only speak to one of these knives, although, again, my Buddy Dean said they're all right here in quality. Um, but I have to say, I am very impressed with this guy. Um, the Clark has done a really impressive job making something handmade that is really quite well done um, and with really, really good fit and finish. And so if you are loving the design, if you love the handmade work, you don't mind paying that money to support the artist, then uh, I got to say, choosing to pick one of these guys up would be a real walk in the clock. Uh, I get it, because walk in the park, but clock knives, no? Okay. Anyways, hope this has been interesting to you, and have yourselves just an absolutely wonderful rest of your day. Bye now.